Good morning, and welcome to part three of Cab Rider Comprehensive. Today we're going to pick the pace up a little bit, drawing more cabinets. And I want to start with this set of cabinets, or this set of boxes. It's one cabinet. I, You will catch me probably frequently referring to a box as a cabinet. But a cabinet is the entire set of boxes, and boxes are the individual storage areas. But I make the mistake of referring to boxes as cabinets, so um, please forgive me. Okay, so what we're going to draw, start off drawing is this set of boxes, this cabinet right here. It's the sink cabinet, a three draw bank, which we call a combo, and a blind corner cabinet, which goes into the corner. And to show you that, I'm going to get rid of appliances and uh, countertops. And you can see this cabinet actually goes into the corner. The amount it goes into the corner is 12 and 3 quarters inches, but you can change that with the defaults. Now, I just might do that to show you how we do it. The other thing we want to notice about it before we draw it is your typical style with the current settings is an inch and a half. But here, the styles are an inch and three quarters there and an inch and three quarters here. And that's to allow doors and drawers to open without their pulls and uh, draw pulls and door pulls knocking into one another. You can also like everything else in Cab Rider, you can change this to some other dimension. Okay, so we're going to start with this right off the bat. So let's let's go to the where we left off yesterday. Okay, here's where we left off in part two. Although you'll notice that I took the liberty of adding a bunch of construction points and construction lines where we're going to draw cabinets. And the reason for that is um, as a SketchUp user, you know how to draw construction lines and construction points. We don't need to waste time on in the video doing that. So this, this will make it easy for us to know where we're going to draw our next cabinet. And in this one, this is going to be our next cabinet. This is the one that uh, I showed you in a, a moment ago. And so the way we're going to start is with the story stick as usual. I'm just going to orbit this a little bit so I can see better what's going on. We'll start with the story stick and I'll click on the left end. By the way, I could draw this right to left or left to right and Cab Rider will know the difference. I'm going to start here though, left to right. And all you need to do is start at the starting point, come out along the construction line. If I'm not on the construction line, I'll get an error, something like this, that says you must pick a point on a construction point, construction line, vertex, or edge. So I want to keep my eye on the inference engine, when it, and when it's online, I'll click. And that, by the way, I can click anywhere. I don't have to know the width of the style, because the moment I choose the type of style I want, Cab Rider knows what the width is. So in this case, I want a left end, and I want to match this opening over here. So I'll have a left end opening. I'll go to the other end, and recall, recall that I am, I am going to um, put a blind box in that corner. So I'll come out here on the construction line, this time, this time notice I can only choose right styles because this was the left. I've already got that defined. So now it wants to know what the right style is going to be. And it's going to be a right end blind. All right, now I want to place the connector styles to give me the right size of the boxes. I want this opening in this first box, which is going to be the sink. I want it to be 34 inches. So I'll use the control key twice. Start with the inside point, go 34. 
And since that wants to be the inside dimension, I'm going to come over here, click, and it will correct for a connector dimension. I don't have to do that. Now I want a combo that's going to be 25 inches on the inside dimension. So again, I'll use my distance tool, go 25 inches. And since that's the inside dimension, I'll click out here. And what it should leave me is a dimension of 15 inches. Let's see if we have it right. 15 inches, we got it. Okay. So now we'll go back to our story stick tool. And we've got our cabinet fully defined as far as placement and types of styles. So now I'll hit end on the keyboard and it'll want to know what kind of boxes I want. This first one I want to be a sink. Sink base. Two doors, two draws. Of course the draws aren't going to be real. The next one I want it to be I believe it was a combo, a draw bank combo, three draws. And this last one is going to be my the blind, blind corner base. And just one door. I could put a draw in here if I wanted, but um, I'm going to leave it just one door. And there we go. And notice, now here's the end style right here. I told you it was going to be one and three quarters inches, but this is larger than one and three quarters inches. And you'll see why in a moment when we come around the corner. And also, since we don't want things that are stored back here to be falling out, there's a piece of plywood that's placed on the front here. All right, so that's our second cabinet. Let's, let's start working on this wall. On this wall, this is the blind cabinet right here. The sink, the combo, the blind. On this one, we want a standard base cabinet on both sides of the oven. And then we want to end it with a diagonal corner cap. So let's let's draw those. I'm going to rotate around here so I can see this better. And make sure I get the right dots. All right, so this just wants to be a standard base down here. I'll take my story stick, and this time it's going to be a one box cabinet. And I'm going to choose a left end butt. Every time you have a blind, you want to accompany it with a butt. And you'll see why in a second. And this one's going to be, that's going to be, uh, looks like I must have done something wrong because it's looking for left styles. So I'm going to back up here, do that again. That should be a left end butt. Now it should be looking for a right style. There we go. And we want a right end filler because we're going to put the stove next to it. And this is going to be a standard base. One draw. Now, 
this looks like I only have one cabinet here. Let me take a look at that. I may not have put another dot over here where I needed it, but let me just go back and take a look at that. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. Let me just make sure I know what I'm doing here. That opening's going to end up nine and a quarter. All right, let's go back. I think I know what I'm. I've done. This is actually the end point. Um, this is going to be a little different. Pay attention now. I've got two cabinet or two boxes here forming one cabinet. The first one's going to start out with an opening here. So again, I'm going to use a left end opening. Actually, I'm going to start this on the other side. Show you what happens. I'm going to start this on the right side. And I'll come over here on the line. All right, this time I want to right end something. The right end something I want is a right end, a right pivot. And the reason I'm going to use a pivot is because this is a corner cabinet. It's a diagonal corner cabinet. Diagonal corner cabinets kind of pivot around the corner. So they aren't really an end style. They need to have a, a pivoting position. So we'll, we'll use a right pivot panel because the end of this is going to be a panel. All right. The other end is going to be a left end opening. for the range. And I can either go nine and a quarter here or I can go from here fourteen inches and then go inside and I should end up with nine and a quarter. Okay. So now, let me just explain this a little bit before we draw it. This is going to be that small nine and a quarter standard box. This is going to be the diagonal corner cap. And what it's going to do, this is a pivot point. So imagine drawing a circle. In fact, I'll do that. Let me draw a circle. I'll start at this pivot point. And imagine drawing a circle out to here, the inside one. And I'm actually going to leave this here because what you're going to find is going to happen. Is I'll put this construction point. You'll find the other style comes out to here once it pivots. So here we go. I'm going to use my story stick. I'm going to say end. Now it wants to know what this is, this right hand cabinet, because we started from the right side and went this way. I'm going to say it's a diagonal corner base, one door. Now it wants to know what this one is over here, and that's going to be a standard base. All right, now notice, remember I drew this little mark right there from the circle. I basically took a 90 degree portion out of the circle. And notice where that ended up. If I used my construction tool, Notice that that junction right there goes right through this point, as does this one go right through this point. What that does is it forces this corner cap to be symmetrical around this point and this point and this pivot point that I drew out here. 
which you can see is the center of this circle right there. So that's the, sim sim uh, the symmetrical part of the corner cab. It's possible that the corner cab will have different length styles here. In fact, let's check that out. Notice this style is an inch and a half on the front. If we look at this one, It's an inch and nine sixteenths. And that's typical of an end style because it allows for an extra sixteenth for the uh, the width of a face frame, which is thirteen sixteenths instead of three quarters of an inch. So that's why we called that a pivot style. And that's how the pivot styles work. Pivot styles work with corner caps. There's two types of corner caps. There's the diagonal corner cab and there's the lazy Susan. Both of them work with pivot styles. All right, so with that little bit of education about pivot connectors and pivot styles, we'll get rid of our circle. And we'll get rid of these construction lines. Okay, so now we're moving along pretty good. Let's go back. I want to show you. I forgot to mention this. Remember that I said if I choose this, this is a blind style, a right end blind style. And notice I said every time you have a blind style, you ought to accompany it with a butt style. That's, this is a butt style. What that will do is give you an extra width of the style, as I said before, to allow for, you know, pulls to stick out without doors and drawers crashing into it. But the other thing it does is it extends the blind style into the blind area a little bit, just so it... Um, just so that you've got a nice butt joint here. Okay. Now what we want to do, let's go look at what we have to do to finish the base cabinets along the walls. I'm having trouble with my mouse here. I'm going to, we'll go see what we have to do to finish the base cabinets along the walls and then we'll do the base cabinets here and here. So let's start with this wall. All right, this is the wall we're going to work on now. It's the west wall. The first thing I notice is that we made a mistake in part two. You'll see in a moment that what we drew here was a diagonal corner cap and what we wanted was a Lazy Susan. No big deal. We can fix that. Next to it is a single box cabinet, a draw bank base, four draws. And just while we're here, I'm going to take a, a measurement. The opening on this is 20 and a half inches. I want to remember that, 20 and a half inches. Next to it is a different type of cabinet. This actually is a divided base cabinet. And we're going to spend some time on this because they're kind of unique types of cabinets. But right now, let's go put this in. This is the uh, draw bank base, four draws. So here we are. This is the mistake we made. This is a diagonal corner cab, and we wanted it to be a Lazy Susan. No big deal. What we do is we simply click on it, or right-click on it, and say, Edit Cabinet. It says, do you want to use the stored defaults? 
I should explain for a second. Every time a cabinet is drawn, two things are stored in it, just like the DNA of the cabinet. The first thing that's stored in it is all the story stick information and all the information about the types of boxes and the number of doors and drawers and things like that. So all that information we give during the story stick process and during the process that we begin after hitting the end key on the keyboard, all of that is stored in every single component of the cabinet. What else is stored in every single component of the cabinet is the cab rider settings, which you're going to see in a little bit. The cab rider settings define how a cabinet is constructed. The first part of what was stored tells you what the type of cabinet is, how many doors and drawers, and things like that. Both of those are stored in every single part of every single cabinet and they are the DNA of the cabinet. So what it's asking us here is, do we want to use the cabinet store defaults? That's the second part, the defaults, the cab writer settings. We'll say yes. And now it wants to know if we want to change any of the cabinets themselves. And again, it's pointing to the very first cabinet. We called it a diagonal corner cap. What I really wanted was a lazy Susan. So I change it, say next, and I'm going to just say next from here out because I don't want to change these two. I'm going to accept what I already have there. So I'll say next and next. And there you go. We just changed this to a Lazy Susan corner cap. Now what we want to put here is a four draw bank. And we want a four draw bank that has an opening of, I believe it was 20 and a half inches. Um, there's a couple of ways I can do this. Let's take this edge here and let's make a zero inch construction line parallel to it. And you'll notice that there's an intersection right here. If I measure this distance from here to that intersection, notice it's 20 and a half inches. Um, shouldn't be surprised because I've already designed this cabinet and that's the way I designed it to work. So what I'm going to do is when I draw this next cabinet next to it, I'm going to share the connector style. Notice this is a connector style. Look over here and you'll see it's a left corner connector. I'm going to share the connector style with this cabinet. But when I draw the cabinet, I'm actually going to add another connector style and I'm going to have to delete one of them. So what I'll do is um, you don't really have to do this, but I'm going to create another construction point there to show me the beginning of that connector style. So now I'm ready to draw my cabinet. Now over here, by the way, is that divided base that we're going to talk about and spend some time on. So this wants to be a connector style as well. And it's going to be the left end connector. So I'll come out here and I will choose a left end connector. And I'll come here and I'll choose a right end connector. And now I'm ready to define my box. It's going to be a draw bank base. This time I want four draws. And there we go. I've got my draw bank base. All right, I'm going to leave this divided base until the beginning of the next part because I want to spend some time on it. We only have about five minutes left in this video. So what I am going to do instead, let's look at the finished drawing. What I'm going to do instead is 
draw this island. And there's a couple of things that are different about the island. These front row of cabinets are four inches shorter than the back row of cabinets. In other words, instead of the standard 36 inch countertop height, it's going to be a 32 inch countertop height. The other thing I did here was, just for fun, I made these all slab draws. Not the doors, but the draws. So I'll show you how to do that. Now let's go back to our drawing and pick up there. Okay, we're back. I'm going to rotate around here. And I'm going to start on the right side here, just for a change, and come out. This time, I'm going to want a right end panel. This is an island. I want panels at the end. So it's going to be a right end panel. I'll also want a left end panel. I believe these openings were 15 inches here, so I'll take my distance tool, go 15, and come over this way, and again, I'll go 15 this way, come over, and whatever's left will be the middle. Now before I go and draw this cabinet, hit end and draw the cabinets, I want to go into my cab writer defaults. And I want to go to base cabinets and change the countertop height for the base cabinets to 32 inches. And by the way, anytime I make a change here, I either have to hit the update button or if I go to another tab, it'll also update. Or if I close this, it will update. I like to get into the habit of hitting the update button just so I don't do something I shouldn't be doing and, and not make a change. So I'll hit the update button. That'll lock into 32 inches here. The other thing I want to do is go to the draws. Not the doors, but the draws. And I want to choose slab for the draws. And again, I'll update, close it. And now I'm ready to draw this cabinet. I can hit end. And it wants to know what's on the right here. That's going to be, oh, one other thing. I'm going to cancel this. One other, one other thing I forgot to do. And let's go back. This is very important. I changed the base cabinet height. So now I have to go to the draws, or the face frame, I'm sorry, the face frame. And notice I've got three red lights here. Since the cabinet height, the countertop height, went from 36 inches to 32, these no longer work for the dimensions of the draw boxes or the draw box fronts, the draw fronts. I have to change them. And notice it tells me I have to reduce these numbers by four inches. That makes sense since I went to a counter from a countertop height of 36 inches to 32. Well, the only draws I'm going to be interested in, I believe, is the, let me just look. Yeah, this is a three draw bank. So the only draws I'm going to be interested in is the three draw bank. So I'll correct that. I've got to subtract four inches. So what I might just do just for fun is subtract, make that seven. That's two inches and make this 10. Now if I update, notice I now get a green light. So now I'm ready to go draw my cabinet. I'll hit the end key. The first wants to be uh, a three draw bank, draw bank base. 
with three draws. The next wants to be standard base, but this time I'm going to have two doors. And the last one wants to be a three draw bank or draw bank base with three draws. And there we go. Got just what we wanted. Let's just check this out. The countertop is an inch and a quarter. So 30 and three quarters and an inch and a quarter is 32. Just what we wanted. Now we're almost out of time. Well, we are out of time, but I'm going to go over here. No, we'll save this. We'll end here and we'll save this for tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you in part four. Thank you.